Well, once again, I filmed the entire video and it's flipped itself over into the incorrect orientation, so I'm having to do it again. Today, I'd like to show you some hoop art, thread painting, messy embroidery that I've done and I don't think I've shown off in video form yet. Um, these have been on my Instagram, but I've not put together a video and talked about them, so I'm going to do that just now. Um, the, there's kind of a theme with these three, and these are the last three pieces I've done, which is kind of odd. I've been on to moths a lot. Um, I guess I've just been enjoying moths, attracted to moths, fixating on moths. There's a lot of moths coming out in my artwork. <laughs> but this particular moth has been on my mind because I have a chrysalis and I'm hoping that it will emerge sometime later this year. This is an elephant hawk moth. Um, I know the colors look a bit unreal, especially for a moth. You think of moths as being a bit drab, but there are plenty of very colorful moths in the world. And in the UK, it's even more rare to find things that are super colorful. Uh, I've never seen one in person, but I did have a caterpillar for a day. My friend found it for me and she gave it to me because she knows how I love to raise caterpillars into butterflies, but it was ready to pupate. So I made it a little habitat and it successfully pupated <laughs> and now we wait so i'm hoping that it will be fine my last pupation experiment that was with cinnabar moths that did not go so well they never came out but this time i'm trying something different and we'll see how that goes so Hopefully some point in the future I may have a moth video. <laughs> um, but for now I have a an art moth video. I apologize if you can hear my washing machine gurgling. Not my washing machine, it's my dishwasher. It's really loud and there's nothing I can do about it because this is when I've got time to make videos. And speaking of time to make videos, I've been thinking that I don't know how long I'll be able to keep up like two videos a week but I know I have enough content like things that I'm working on things I can show that I've made um, completed things tutorial things even that I probably can keep up in the feature of being able to like uh, make a video and then schedule it ahead of time is super useful so we'll see how long I can go with the I've been doing kind of Monday and Thursday since the beginning of the year. See how long I can keep it up. Because I've pretty much given up on my blog. Blogs have died a death. And I used to invest quite a lot of time in my blog. It got quite a lot of traffic. And there's quite a lot of posts on there about me raising caterpillars. <laughs> and believe it or not, it's something a lot of people are interested in. So anyway... Trying out the YouTube format. We'll see how it goes. So about the actual art part of this, I just kind of freehand the design. I draw on the on the fabric with uh, like Taylor's chalk because it rubs right off after. So I, I'll very roughly sketch kind of my parameters. And then I just start adding layers of thread. It's messy and not like proper embroidery where the stitches are really um, arty, I guess. <laughs> They're very precise, very neat. This is just sloppy. And that's the way I like it. Because if I was trying to be too precise, I would fixate on the fact that it wasn't perfect and then it would just ruin the whole experience for me. So by going at it with the view of it being imperfect, it allows for um, an easier creative flow, I guess. I have over a hundred <laughs> spools of thread and I didn't have the exact kind of colors I needed so I was kind of putting colors next to each other that I was hoping would at least create the effect I was after. You can see it's kind of almost three-dimensional as well with all the layers of thread I put on. 
so it's not super precise. It's certainly not symmetrical, but I think it's a pretty good representation of an elephant hawk moth, and I'm happy enough with it that I am finished. That's it. No more. <laughs> That's enough. So I'll move on to the next one, and this looks like a cartoon, doesn't it? But this is also based on a real insect, and they're called plume moths. Now, I first got interested in plume moths because my friend had just, we go out into nature and we send each other pictures. <laughs> that's that's kind of a thing that we do um, where she's in Yorkshire, I'm up in West Lothian in Scotland. So a lot of what we get is similar, but um, there's so few insects well, certainly by comparison with North America, where I'm from, that finding them isn't always the easiest. So they're out there, but finding them is a bit difficult, which is, again, probably why I've never seen... Oh, sorry, I hit that. Why I've never seen an elephant hawk moth either. I've never seen one of these in real life, but she sent me some photos, and I just thought, that can't be real. What is that? It's fluffy and cute. It looks like a little fairy. And then I looked up some pictures on Google, and I was just amazed that these things even exist. They are so utterly bizarre. And look at the wings. They're like feathers. None of the traditional kind of scales that you see on moth or butterfly wings. But I would strongly recommend that if you find this as fascinating as I do, which I know not many people do, but look up some pictures on Google. They are just so cool. <laughs> Such interesting, neat creatures. But they're very, very small. So I'm hoping to someday see one for myself. Um, their larvae feed exclusively, I believe, on bindweed. Now, bindweed is a weed. Um, people don't want it around. And that is because it ha tends to choke out other plants in the garden. But it's really beautiful. It's got lovely heart-shaped leaves and flowers. Um, it's it's essentially morning glories, like wild morning glories, so that those kinds of leaves and those kinds of flowers. And um, I considered putting some in my garden. I was talked out of it because I like my garden <laughs> and apparently they would have taken over my garden. So I don't have any bindweed and I'm just going to have to hope that one day I see these little critters in nature or maybe I can obtain some of the larvae fingers crossed and raise them up but we'll see so that is my plume moth he hangs in my living room because I love him I love to look at him this last piece I've got here is kind of a multimedia piece less thread painty still quite well there, there's embroidery I've embroidered the spider web and all those little sparkly bits aren't you just seeing the back of, or the light from the back of the fabric. It's actually glitter. I used a glitter gel pen to highlight <laughs> the web to make it a bit dewy, I guess. I made this moth here. Now I had these insect wings. They're, um, I cut them into a butterfly shape and... Uh, stuck them all together, used some rhinestones and some wire, and you can see I highlighted the wings, uh, the veins and the wings with that glitter gel pen as well. This isn't 100% finished. I'd like to get some tiny feathers and glue them to the antenna to make it a bit more mothish and to add another, um, another type of material to the hoop. So that's, that's what I'll do once I find the perfect little fluffy tufts. I'll put that on there. Now the reason why I've got the moth in a spider web, I'll raise my camera a bit so you can see more, is because if you follow this down, 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 there is a spider, a jeweled spider. If I can get him to focus, it would be ever so nice. No, he's just going to be awkward. Come on, spider. You want to focus. He's like, no, I really don't. Thank you ever so much. Oh, my camera is problematic, isn't it? 
Come on, there we go. So yes, if you saw my advent gifts this year, you will have seen that I made some jeweled spiders for my Halloween advent. Now, what I haven't shown you is the fact that I did many, many, because when I find a new craft, I do it and 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 do it some more. So I've got, my living room is just hanging with jeweled spiders, all different. Um, this one I thought looked really nice with the hoop. Um, I'm thinking about doing a video just about um, jeweled spiders in the future, possibly the very near future, and maybe even a little tutorial as well. I figured out how to make them myself. I know people um, have many tutorials out there and people have been making these for ages, but I didn't follow anyone's instructions. I've noticed that I'm the only one I've seen that actually puts their legs up as well so that they hang in more of a spidery shape. So I will show how I do that and perhaps someone will find it useful. So that is all I have to show you for today. My three hoops, my three mothish hoops and my spider. And hopefully I will be able to bang out another video um, for which one? This will be a Thursday video, so I'll get something put together for Monday. Something spiderish, I think. Okie dokie. Um, see if I can keep up this enthusiasm. <laughs> Maybe. Right. So, I'll leave it here, and I'll be back soon. Bye!